Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start. So, <laughs> uh, I'll say for the people on the video, we have a very small crowd here today, so uh, it'll be, uh, yeah, tailored to them. Uh, so yeah, this is Citations and Bibliographies, and I just wanna front load this as um, what, what I'm gonna be able to cover and not cover. So, I am going to be able to talk about sort of in general what citations do, what the point of them is, what kind of information they include, what sorts of things you put in a bibliography. Um, but what you, what I can do is you won't leave knowing every single detail of how to format a citation or a bibliography. Um, it's quite complicated because there are a number of different citation styles and the way that you treat each different type of source, whether it's a website, a video, a book, an article, is gonna be slightly different. Um, and so those details are something that um, is hard to memorize, hard to learn. And so what I, what I can do instead is help you understand the big picture and then where to go to find the answers of those small details. So that's kind of the scope of this presentation. So let me start off first by talking about, in general, what is citation, why do you want to do it, and when do you need to cite things? Um, so first, I have a handout, uh, and the handout answers these questions pretty clearly. Um, so let me just highlight a few things. So a citation is basically telling, when you're, you're writing a document, an academic uh, piece of work, it lets you know when your ideas or material in there is borrowed from somewhere else. Um, and it helps them then go and find that source afterwards. So um, when you think about your goals for citation, um, you want the readers to be able to figure out how to find that work that's actually where you got your ideas from. So, um, so I'm gonna come back to that. Uh, and th some of the other reasons why you want to cite sources is not just because that's the standard or because your teacher told you to, but um, it helps you avoid plagiarism, which is always good. <laughs> uh, it helps differentiate which ideas are yours versus which ideas are someone else's, which is good. It helps you take credit for your ideas and give credit where credit's due to other people. Um, it lends outside support to your ideas because you can say, it's not just me who thinks this, right? Other people who, who are very highly qualified also have this, you know, they can support this with the research. Um, it tells your readers where to go for more information. Hey, I wanna learn more about that. Where can I go? It helps them find those sources. And, um, and it, it shows the amount of research you've done. So you can say, oh wow, like your, your uh, teacher will look at this paper and say, oh my gosh, look, um, that person read like 10 articles and a bunch of books and they've really thoroughly researched this topic. So that's kind of the goals. Um, and, and so it's including enough information to do that within your paper. Uh, that's, that's what it is, why to do it, and when is it necessary? Again, this is on the handout. So you have to, you should cite your source anytime you're using an idea that you did not originally come up with. So it is, um, the simplest is if you're quoting someone else. So if you use a quote, obviously you need to say where that quote came from. But also, even if you just paraphrase information that you got from somewhere else, if it's, you're not quoting them, but the idea came from somewhere else, you need to cite that. Um, and yeah, there's a few other bullet points on there, but those are basically the situations. When the idea is not yours is when you need to cite. Um, so that's gonna go on throughout your paper. Um, so let me go into a little more detail um, on how to do it or what that looks like within a paper. So citations generally include uh, a, a certain set of information. And so this is the information you wanna collect as your reading sources or watching videos or whatever it is as you go about creating your paper and your set of resources that you're going to use to write it. Um, you want to include the following information, so keep this in mind so that you can gather it. So uh, this, this is what all citations pretty much include. All the different styles use the same information. So the author, 
the title, the publisher, the date, and the page numbers. And this is going to look a little bit different if it's a website than if it's a book or an article. And, and so what you need to do is, is look at the material that describes whatever style you're using for that particular source. Um, so I can't tell you exactly how you would cite in MLA style website off the top of my head. You'll need to look at a resource that tells you how to do that. But pretty much all the same information applies. So I've done a lot of work where I've cited websites. It's really hard to find a date on a website of when this material was published. Um, so a lot of website citations have a little ND in them, which means no date. Um, you still have to <laughs> try to find the date, and if there isn't one, you just put no date. Um, and sometimes there aren't page numbers in websites, but you try to gather as much as you can in this information for every source that you're using. So the, the kind of corollary thing to that is you need to keep track of this and try to stay organized with your citations as you're reading things and getting ready to write your work and as then at, throughout the writing process. Um, so before we even get into like formatting things, you need to know which ideas came from which source and you need to have this information ready. So I have a number of tips for how to keep track of sources and stay organized so that you're ready to do the citations um, as you write the paper. So the first thing is to just have all your sources written down um, with the relevant citation information. So the super old school way to do this is on index cards. So you have an index card for each source and you write the title, the author, you know, this, all the stuff that I have here on the PowerPoint, you have that written down for each source. You have an index card for each one of them, and then it's very organized. Um, you can also do this electronically, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit later on about how the, there is some different citation database software that you can use where you create your own database of sources that then you can draw from later. But however you do it, you just need to um, keep all that information written down in an organized way. Um, if you if you have a book that you're citing, that information is going to be in the book, so you're not going to lose it. But a lot of times you might be citing something that um, is, let's say you make a photocopy of something, you know, a chapter of a book or something. It's very important to make sure you don't lose the citation information if you extract a piece from a larger work. So you'll want to write down on that photocopy all of this information so that you have it. Um, same thing if you print something out, make sure the citation information is part of that printout. Uh, and um, one of the things, actually, just a small detail that is important to note is a lot of citation styles require, if you're citing a website, that you put the date you accessed the website, uh, especially because websites come and go. And so if it's there when you're using it, but then it disappears later on, they want to know, wh when did you find that? You need the date you accessed it. So if you're using a website, it's a good idea to print it out or capture a screenshot of it with the date that you accessed it um, so that you have that information permanently as it was when you accessed it and you know when that happened. So just make sure that that information doesn't get lost. Then as you move into the writing process, you want to note the sources as you write the paper. So if you write the whole paper first and then go back and try to do the citations, you're going to make mistakes. You need to know where each idea came from, and that information, for me, I know, just disappears as soon as I write it down. So I do it sentence by sentence. So each sentence, as I type it, where did that idea come from? If it's mine, great. If I got it from somewhere else, I note that as I write the sentence. Um, and you could write it, if you, if you know how to do the citation as you're writing it, that's fine. Or, you know, maybe your own little notation that you can fix later, you know, uh, this is from the red book, page 27, and then you can come back and fix it later. But just know exactly where that information came from as you're writing the paper. Um, as a general rule of thumb, um, in an academic paper, I would say every paragraph usually needs to have some kind of citation. Unless the information in that paragraph is entirely your idea, 
which is pretty rare. Usually there's at least one outside source consulted in each paragraph. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're writing that you're like, okay, where did these ideas come from? Sometimes there's more than one per paragraph, generally at least one. Um, another tip I have is to keep really careful track of what things are quotes and what things are paraphrases. So if you're copying word for word something out of the source, it needs to have quotation marks around it. And, and then you'll cite that. You're also going to cite things that are not word for word, but that are ideas approximately the same as um, something from another source. And there's a lot of stories of people reading an article and looking at it and saying, oh my gosh, that's word for word from something that I wrote. This happens to authors a lot. And, I, and, and it's just straight up plagiarism, and I don't think it's intentional most of the time. I think what happens is whoever wrote the paper didn't keep track of the fact that that was a quote, and they just copied it down and then later on thought that they had written it. <laughs> and so it's, it's really important to keep quotation marks, keep, know when something's a quote and when it's a paraphrase. Um, yep, and then the other thing is uh, definitely keep track of page numbers. If you're using a source that has page numbers um, and your idea comes from a specific page or set of pages, keep track of those. Not every citation style requires page numbers, but a lot of them do, so it's always good to know what page things came from. Um, it's also just helpful for you if you put a quote in and you know what page it came from and then later on it doesn't make sense to you, you can go back and look at that page in the original source and figure out what you were getting at when you first copied the quote down. So definitely keep track of the page numbers. Okay, so that's kind of how to collect the information, stay organized as you go. Um, I'm going to get into some um, the specifics and some styles of citation next. So these are the three main citation styles. And the word style really is appropriate to them because they're not... Um, they're not better or worse than each other, and they generally include the same information, but it's just formatted differently. MLA stands for Modern Language Association, and that's a style uh, that the Modern Language Association dictates, and it's generally used in the humanities, so a lot of um, literature, English type of um, fields use that citation style and the academic journals that they publish will ask for people to send their work in using MLA style. APA is American Psychological Association, and that's really widely used in the social sciences, sometimes in the humanities. And then Chicago is used both in social sciences and humanities, and specifically a lot of um, history. People who write history papers use Chicago. Um, and the reason that I go into this is to explain that they're used in different fields, but again, there's not really a hierarchy toward to them. And if you're trying to decide which style you should use, um, the, the easiest way is to ask your teacher, what do they prefer? If they don't care, then pick a style that's most likely to be used in your major and just learn that one really well and keep doing it. So for example, I um, recently got a degree in communication. It's within the social sciences. A lot of people, pretty much everyone uses um, APA in communication, although it varies a little bit. So I just learned APA, did APA all the time, and, and that went well for me. Can you tell the difference, like, on that? Yeah, so the main differences are really small. So they have to do with, like, do you just, do you italicize the title? or do you leave it unitalicized? What order do you put title, author, page numbers in? Do you, where do you put commas and periods? And so I can't actually tell you off the top of my head those differences. They're all on those small kind of levels. Um, one big difference actually is that Chicago uses footnotes instead of um, in-text kind of parentheses that I'm going to show you in a second. 
So if you like footnotes, if that looks sort of fancy to you, you could use Chicago. Um, the uh, otherwise, it's just it's like the minutia of formatting is the difference. Um, they look a little different, um, but the information is, is the same either way. Um, there are other styles in the sciences, like you know, biology, chemistry, things like that. They have a bunch of different uh, particular styles to those fields that they use. Um, these are the main ones that are really easy to find information on how to use them, and uh, that are more widespread than others. So I, these are the three that I really recommend um, using. Yeah, okay, so there's kind of two components to any citation um, as you're writing your paper. The in-text citations and then the bibliography at the end. So the in-text citation is as you're going along, typing your paragraph, when I said you go sentence by sentence, where did these ideas come from? You need to say sentence by sentence where the ideas came from. So, you know, um, one sentence you will note, okay, that idea came from this book, the next sentence, maybe the idea came from an article, and you need to explain that as you go. Um, then, at the end, you'll have a bibliography or a references list or a works cited list that lists the complete information for each source that you used. And so, um, you're going to want to do both the in-text citation and the bibliography when you write a paper. Um, and those things have different formatting to them, and you need to do both. That's what I think about last semester. Because uh, I did the bibliography, and I didn't do in-text citation. And I think the instructor was a little bit confused where the text, like, from which source came. Yep. From. So right. I know, like, how to do, like, uh, from each, after each paragraph. You have to say where that source Exactly, exactly. Because, you, and you kind of, they work together, right? They work mm -hmm. together. So um, I actually, the next thing I have is an example. So this is using APA style. Like I said, that's the one I'm personally most familiar with, although I'm very happy to help people with other styles. Um, so the, the in-text citation generally just includes the author's last name and the page number. And then what it does is that refers you to the bibliography, which will give you the complete information that your reader needs to find that source. Um, actually, before I go into the details of that, I wanted to just explain maybe the difference between bibliography, references, works cited. And then another thing I know that a lot of CFTC students are being asked to do is an annotated bibliography. So I just wanted to throw out some definitions. So Technically, a bibliography includes a whole list of articles, whether you or and books and videos and whatever it is, um, websites. It includes a complete list of things that you read and reference or read and, and absorbed before you wrote your paper, whether or not you actually cite them in the paper or not. So maybe you just read something as background. It didn't make it into the in-text citations, but it could still be in the bibliography. References and works cited, on the other hand, they're the same thing. They only are the list of things that you used in the in-text citations. So that's usually what most faculty members want, is either a references or a works cited list. Um, they'll let you know, but there is a small difference between a bibliography and those. Did I explain that clearly enough? Okay. An annotated bibliography, and this again is on your handout, the differences between these things. An annotated bibliography is a, just like a bibliography, um, but each item on your list in your bibliography has a little paragraph after it that um, describes it, talks about its quality, and how it was useful to you. Um, and so that's just the main difference. And so a lot of times in annotated bibliography, um, professors will assign, assign that um, early in the research process because they want you to have your sources uh, selected and they want you to think about how they're going to be useful to you. So that's kind of what an annotated bibliography is used for. 
Um, generally, you don't turn in a paper and an annotated bibliography in the same assignment. They'll be two separate things. Okay, so here, let's go back to my example. So the first thing is I've got these top five bullets um, just explaining the information that I collected for this book that I have here in person. It's uh, Autism Awareness Month, so I've got some examples about autism. So I found this book um, in the CWC library, and I went ahead and collected this information from the book. So the author and the title are on the front. That's pretty easy. Um, the publisher, what you want to do is look on the page. It's usually like, I don't know, two or three pages in. On the left side, where you see a copyright symbol, you look at that page and you can figure out who the publisher is and their location. Often the publishers are in a bunch of different cities. So this one is in Los Angeles, London, New Delhi, Singapore, and Washington, D.C. Um, so uh, usually I just go with the first one. <laughs> um, and typically if you're here in the United States, the books are published in the United States, so the city that's here is where it was published. Um, they always want the publisher's city. Not sure why, but that's in every citation. So I know this is a Sage book. Sage, one of their cities is Los Angeles. Um, the date, this, a lot of sources will have multiple dates. Books will have a whole list of the different dates that it's been published. You want the date that your copy has been published. So you don't want when it was originally written. Um, you want the date of the thing that you're using. So um, this has happened to me a lot where I, let's say I'm citing a short story that's in an anthology. The short story was written in 1950, but the anthology was published in 2011. The date is going to be 2011 because that's when that copy was published. Um, so usually it's the most recent date that's in, the, in there, but um, yeah, I can't think of a time when it wouldn't be the most recent date. So that's also nice to know if you're reading a bibliography that that date doesn't mean that the source is very current or that it was written that year. That's just when it was published. So that's a, that's a key thing to know. Um, and then the page number of the particular um, piece of information that I want to cite. Um, in this case, I picked something from page 79. So that's my page. So that's the information I collected. Um, and then I've got a few different examples. So these first two are examples of even text citations. Um, and actually, let me just read you the passage that I'm talking about here. Page 79. Okay. So on page 78 is the beginning of a chapter, and it talks about, um, it gives this definition of play. Play is an activity that is not imposed or directed by others. It's free from external rules, no specific goal, etc., etc. Actually, this cites a few sources that um, are, you know, that where those definitions of play came from. Um, it talks about how children use play, and then the paragraph on page 79 that I'm citing here says, "However, the play of children with ASD, which is autism spectrum disorder." <laughs> is differentiated substantially from the definition I just provided. They lack varied, spontaneous, pretend, or social imitative play according to their developmental level. Okay, so... So is that a bibliography then? So the, the bottom one's a bibliography, the first two are in-text citations. So this is as if I'm writing my paper, this first example. So children with autism spectrum disorders play differently from other children. That is not written here in those words, but that's what I got out of it when I read it. I'm like, oh, most children play one way, kids with autism play, they don't play that same way. So, that, so that's my paraphrase or my summary of, of that information. So that's how I would cite this using APA, is you, you put these parentheses, these parenthetical citations, and I just note the author's name, the year, and then the page number. So that would be coming at the end of your paper? Nope. This is in the middle of the paper. Oh, okay. So this sentence, children with autism spectrum disorders, is a sentence that, that I wrote in the middle of my paper. And then, um, and then I'm going to put that parentheses after it to say where I got that information from. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's just like within the paper. 
And the second one is the same thing, but I just showed what it would look like if I were going to use a quote. Um, so uh, this is something I wrote. According to Calvia, 2011, autistic children, and then I put the quote. Um, and then I say which page number I got it from. So it works pretty much the same way if I'm just paraphrasing versus quoting. You know, there's a couple small differences. Um, but you can see in both cases that I can tell where the idea came from, and I can then go ahead and find that source in the bibliography. So that bottom bullet point is what it would look like in the bibliography. So you can see it's got the complete information, the author's name, the title, um, the publisher in the city, and I didn't put the page number there because in the bibliography usually you're, you just, you're listing the whole work. It's the in-text citations where you put the page numbers. What about the um, one? So those don't go in the paper anywhere. That's just an example of the information that I'm collecting oh, as I go okay. along. So I just wrote that um, in this case just to kind of give you a sense of, you know, as I was saying, um, this is what you need to collect. Yeah. I just wanted to show, okay, I collected that page number, that that information, and then here's how I would here's how I would use it. Um, if I were paraphrasing the information, if I were quoting it, or in the bibliography. So again, this is only one tiny example because this is how I would paraphrase from a book using APA style, <laughs> and then how I would quote from a book using APA style, and then how I would do a bibliography of a book using APA style. If it's not a book, if it's a website or an article, it's going to look different. And then if it's using MLA or Chicago style, again, it's going to look different. So I'm going to get to like how to figure out those details. Um, you know, what do I put in parentheses? Where do I put the periods? All that kind of stuff. Um, I'll, I'll show you where to get that information. It's very difficult to memorize. I don't think anyone memorizes it. You get to learn the patterns, um, but still, if you're using a new kind of source, almost everyone has to go look that up. Okay, so those are just some examples of how that works. Okay, that, looking up how to do all that and figuring out those details is really hard, so there are a number of ways that you can get a computer to generate the citation for you, and that's what I really recommend doing, especially for the bibliography. The in-text citations, you're gonna have to do those yourself based on the page number and, and how that works, but the bibliography citations, you do not have to like type those. So yes, that's one of them. Okay, so the first easy way is from a library database. So let me show you an example of that. Okay, so um, just to review, I'm here on the CWC homepage. Hover over Quick Links. Click on Library. Hello? Okay, now I'm on the library website. And I'm going to go ahead and use our comprehensive search tool, OneSearch. So I click on OneSearch, and I am going to look for autism and music. Let's just say that's what I'm interested in. Great, music and autism. I've got a bunch of sources. Um, let's just say that I want an academic article. Um, sure, this first one, let's say that's the one that I want. So I'm gonna click on it. Okay, I need to follow this link to find the full text. Now, um, all of our library databases look a little bit different, and so when you find the article, you know, it, the page might not look exactly like this, but all of them have a way to generate a citation. So let's say I read this article, I can download the PDF full text and see if I like it, and I can go ahead and search, okay, here's the author, here's the title of the journal, um, Let's see, where's the date? You can look around for that stuff, or there's a little button over here that says cite. 
And again, all of our library materials have those buttons. Oh, look at this. They've got it in all these different formats, even more than the ones I discussed. So here's how you would do it in MLA. Here's how you would do it in Chicago, also called Turabian. Here's how you would do it in APA. You can just go ahead and copy and paste that into your bibliography, which is awesome. Um, let me show you really quick how you would do that for a book that's in our library catalog. So I'm going to use this book that I have here uh, that's the same one that I um, just showed the example of autism. This is the book. So I click on the book. And then the library catalog appears here in this window. And anything you find in our in our Wildcat or library catalog, there's this little button to cite this title. You can just click on that title, and again the citations appear um, in several different formats. And so if you look at this one, this APA one you'll see that it looks exactly like um, this example here that I had on my PowerPoint. All right, so that's one way to, um, uh, to, to get citations easily. Anytime you're using a library page, there's going to be a cite button. Look around for it. Um, the next way to do it is to use an online citation generator. And so Paula brought some cards for one of them. Um, there are a number of these different websites that you go to and you put in a little bit of information and it creates the citation for you. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, so one that people use a lot is EasyBib. Um, you definitely want to ask your faculty members if they like this or if they have one that they recommend. Um, EasyBib is a popular one, so I'm going to just use that as an example. And so what this particular website, how it works is um, first you need to pick what style you're using. I think this defaults to MLA. Um, and then you need to pick what type of source it is. Is it a website, a book, a newspaper, etc.? There's 59 options because it is a little bit different with each type of source. So let's say I'm going to cite this book um, in APA again, and it's the same book. So I can just, oh gosh, it's going to charge me for APA. Maybe that's why one of the downfalls of EasyBib. Okay, let's do MLA. <laughs> um, and I can just type in the title. Autism and then it has a way of looking that book up. Okay, great. It found the book that I that I have, definitely. The book from Sage 2011. That's the title of it. I select that book. And then I can um, customize it a little bit to um, you know, make sure that it's right. Am I citing the whole book? Am I just putting in a page? Okay, create the citation. Let's just say that that's correct. And then here's the citation. So I can just copy that and put it in um, my bibliography. And you'll notice that that looks a little bit different than the APA version. The APA version, for example, just had the last name and the first initial whereas in MLA they do the whole last name and the whole first name. Those are the kind of differences between the styles. They're not important. <laughs> yeah. But you have to do it right. That's like kind of the way these, this works. So that's why I recommend using some software. Um, okay, so let me show you another example on EasyBib, how that works. Um, if I'm trying to cite a website. So I found this news article um, from the Mail Online that's about how I iPads are helping children with autism. Okay, I like this article. I didn't find it on a library database. How do I cite that? Sure, 
website link? Yep. All I have to do is copy the URL. It's a website. Paste that thing in there. And then it's going to go pull the information off the website for the citation. Oh, yeah, it's from the Mail Online. There's the title, the publisher. Awesome. All right. And then I can continue through all those same steps I just did with the book to get the citation. Okay. So we talked about library databases, citation generators, um, and EasyBib is only one example, but they work similarly. And then the last um, thing that you may want to consider is citation management software. And this is what I alluded to earlier. Citation management software is um, software that you get for your computer, and it allows you to create your own personal database of citations. And um, so the software works kind of like EasyBib in that it can pull the title, uh, the author, the date off of a website um, or from a library database, but then it saves it for you. And it saves it, you know, as long as you have that software. And so you can use it um, in multiple different papers and you don't, um, you, you just, you have it forever. The other thing that these, the software can do is it, it, because it just has the information stored in a database is you can cite it um, one time using APA, a different time using MLA, um, it, depending on the paper that you're writing, and it's really easy to make that happen. All of the different types of software, the one that I'm most familiar with is called Zotero, they also integrate smoothly with your word processing software. So Zotero, for example, has a Microsoft Word plugin associated with it. So you open up your Microsoft Word, and you've got a little Zotero menu now. And as you're typing your paper, those of you who are watching this online can't see my sweet typing um, pantomime. But anyway, so you're typing your paper, and you're like, you type a quote, and you're like, okay, I need to do my parentheses, my in-text citation. You hit this little citation button, and your whole list of citations from your database comes up. You pick the one you want, you pick what style you want, and it does the in-text citation for you and you put in like the page number and it formats all of it. And then, because you're using the software to do your in-text citations, when you get to the end to do your bibliography, it knows what all sources you've used. And then you have hit a little button and it makes the, the bibliography button and it makes the whole bibliography. So um, I wrote a master's thesis that had a 20-page bibliography and it took about one second to make it. And then I did have to go through and edit it a little bit but it's really fast and, and really easy. You do have to get the software and learn how to use it, but if you're gonna be writing a lot of academic papers, um, you know, moving on to UW or another institution or you know, see yourself writing longer papers, I really do recommend um, get it, learning how to use that. Zotero is free, um, and it's just at zotero.org, and you can um, download it and um, there's a lot of tools out there to help you learn how to get started on it, um, and I'm help, happy to help people with that in the library as well. You'll see on a lot of library websites, they say, download this citation to RefWorks is a common one, or EndNote, and those are both citation management software products, that's what that means, um, that are commonly used. And so they, a, a lot of different databases will even have a, um, they're set up to integrate with that software really smoothly. Um, so that's, that's another way to do it. And I don't have an example of that um, here, but that's how it works. A um, little more complicated to learn, but worth it in the end for sure. Okay, so now you kind of understand the overview, but then at some level you also, you, you need to know the details, right? You need to actually make the citations and figure out where to put the parentheses and, and how, like, what information needs to go where and what the, how the bibliography is supposed to look. And all of these styles are very specific. They're very specific about in the bibliography where the indent needs to go and what things need to be in italics and how much space in between lines and all that kind of stuff. So again, don't memorize it, but you need to look up how to do it. So I've got a few different places that I suggest. 
So first, um, the CDBC library has some sub, uh, subject guides on a few different, quite a few different subjects. Um, so I'm going to show you an example here. This is taking a moment. Mm -hmm. So this example is our English subject guide. Um, but they all are the same. So the English subject guide has some stuff on books and articles related to English. Um, but then it also has this tab over here, citation formatting. All of our subject guides have the same tab. This information is exactly the same available on all of them. And um, it explains this. You'll notice this looks very similar to the handout from the workshop here today. So um, it's got some general information about citations, links to a few citation books we have, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, links to EasyBib you'll see here, and a few other citation generators that you might choose to use. Um, and then it's got links to the citation management software. And then over here on the right, um, some links to uh, the details of each of those three main styles. So um, you can click on this if you're using APA and find out the details of APA. And that's actually the next thing on my PowerPoint. Um, let me just show you. So we've got our subject guides. I really recommend this particular website that is the Purdue, the OWL stands for Online Writing Lab, um, from Purdue University, and they have just really clear and useful information on all of this. So this is what the um, Purdue OWL page on APA looks like. So, okay, this is the, the beginning of the page, but if you open up the style guide, you can go to exactly what you need. You're like, okay, I'm doing an in-text citation. Okay, this explains exactly all those details. Okay, what do you capitalize? How do you do this? Um, the titles. Okay, how do you do a short quotation versus a long quotation versus paraphrasing? That's just the beginning of it, right? It can tell you all the details. You're like, okay, well, what if I'm doing an article versus a book? Um, it can give you all of that information. Um, and then, uh, so I've got that listed here on the subject guide, is um, the Purdue Online Writing Lab. And then there's also some information from Northwest College and um, another research and documentation online, another online source. So by using the three of those, kind of triangulating them together, you can get all the information that you need. Um, and then finally, we do have style manuals for the main three styles in the library. So the, the kind of authoritative source on each of the styles is the organization that sets the style. So for APA, the American Psychological Association comes out with its own style guide that's a book that explains all the rules, because it is just a set of rules. We have that book in the library. We have the one for Chicago. We have the one for MLA. So if that's more you need that level of detail or you're more of a book person, you can come check those out. Um, and then we also have this book, actually I brought it today to show people, Site Right, that covers all the styles and it's got the details, um, the main details on most of them here in this book. Um, so, yeah, those are, the, those are the three main places I suggest going for help. Books we have in the library, the online writing lab, and that tab on all of the subject guides. Um, to get to the subject guides, I didn't cover that. Um, they are all from our library website under research. We've got all of them listed here. And any one of them has that citation tab. So that's all I have for today's presentation. Oh, perfectly on time. Um, obviously, there's a lot of questions that come up on the details of things. Um, please come to the library for help um, if you've got any questions. I do not have this stuff memorized, but know where to find the answers, and I can help.
help you work through that. Um, if you're interested in learning more about citation management software, um, I also am a big uh, advocate for that, and I can I can help you figure out how to get set up with it. The end. Thank you. Yeah.